So this is the interview with Ian Jeffries. He's a director of an amazing film documentary about the rise, the fall, and everything in between of XFM. It launched some amazing careers. I'm going to play the promo video for that film. I urge you to go and watch it. And really thanks to Ian for affording his time, because I know he's extremely busy. He was actually on film set, and we'll talk about that in the, in the film. So stick around. This is Dougie Stone Radio, and enjoy this. If you wanted to find out what X film was about, you're going to have to tune in. I was, I was winging it. No, this is it. They're going to hear our demo and they're going to play us. I thought it was all laid out for us. Ricky and I received an email from Sammy that said, "What am I paying you for?" It was, it was probably the best job I ever had. Uh, the only problem was I didn't know what I was doing. Call yourself the bastion of indie guitar music. You don't even know that there's a indie guitar radio station in London. Sammy, I think, was a visionary. I always think that if you can remember it, you weren't really there. BBC Six Music would not exist without XFM. Fact. It was, it was the best year of my life. Because th you know what the real truth was? I don't think any is new how good it really was. There you go, people. That's uh, Go and watch the full film. It's available, and I'll bring our guest on screen now. Thanks for coming on, Jeff. You all right? It's, sorry, Ian. Yeah. Ian, got you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. No, it's brilliant. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. And, uh, I've, oh, brilliant. Thanks. I've watched the film a couple of times over the weekend, and I, I loved it because, because for me... It is about two things that I'm really passionate about, and uh, you know the, the the background behind the film, and the the music, you know what what they did as a as a station and and the timeline and and how it's emerged, and I think it's just a phenomenal piece of television. Well done. Oh, thank you. Really pleased to uh, hear that. Really. Yeah, it's good. So, um, what, how did it all come about then? The film. What whose idea was that? Was it just you know was it over a beer and we go let's do this? Was well, there's a chap um, I've known for a very long time. He used to manage a band that I was in uh, called Paul Hallam, and he came to me, and um, my business partner and I started Jack Pepper Media, and he said, I've got a great idea for XFM, which, you know, back in the day was, um, you know, a place where suddenly they were playing music that we all loved in the daytime. Mm. I think as time goes on, people forget that they just think Oasis and Blur and prodigy were played on daytime radio but it, they just weren't you know up until xfm came along so i really liked it i, I loved the djs uh claire sturgis etc mm. uh, you know gary crowley um and i just thought it'd be a great idea to do really yeah it is it's brilliant and it, it, it's good for us because we were at a station we sell up in 2017 not pirate but we do things a bit different and and i love i love the timeline and the things that did like you, you know the links between um, the cure, the cure, man the cure management team, and then going, oh, well, let's do something a bit different. Let's find a pirate radio station, and now that all come together, I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. You know, and people like Noel Gallagher turning up and doing an acoustic set before the album got released and doing three or four tracks. I mean, that is just, it's just unbelievable that that those things happened back then. It's it's amazing. I mean, you know, there's other mad stuff like you know Dave Bowie's office was upstairs. You know. So people would come in and they'd just hang out with Bowie. You know, Bowie would come down and a beer or whatever, you know, with them. And then you had people like Coldplay weren't sort of a big band at that time. And then um, you'd have Chris Martin just coming in after college, you know, <laughs> sitting there, you know, having a few drinks because he was going out with the secretary or something. He was going out with one of them. You know, it's just madness. The whole thing was bonkers. And then on top of that, you had Ricky Gervais. I know. You know I, mean? I know. I mean, that, that, <laughs> lo that launched Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and the awesomeness of Carl Pilkington. <laughs> you know, the big round face of Carl Pilkington. I mean, some of the stories and you can see from the video, because there's a lot of background stuff from from, from yeah. then, so someone had yeah. the notion of videoing things real time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can, you can see there Ricky and his talent emerging straight away, can't you? You can see that he's, yeah. he's funny and he's, and he's an entertainer yeah absolutely i mean even and he was a blagger as well which oh, is no, just that. like that's what we were you know i mean that's what we all are isn't it that's what we've come from just blagging you know yeah fake it till you make it but i think for him it was like <laughs> what, what was the line it's something like um 
I did. I was lazy. I did. I wanted to do as least as possible. I found the perfect job, and then he brought Stephen Merchant in because he wanted to do even less work. So he brought an assistant in. And the, uh, it was the, the brilliant line I love that Ricky says in there is basically, "I didn't know what I was doing." <laughs> I know. And then he, we got an email, and he says, "What you? What am I paying you uh, people for?" Yeah, and yeah. In some, yeah, that's Sammy Jacobs. Yeah. In some expletives. But I, for me, I mean, it's good uh, for people out there. Go and watch the film. Yeah. What's Bolly for you? But I just took some stuff down, and I thought this. This is amazing now links come together and people come together so you've basically got sammy is a dj thinks do you know what i could get some more people if i i i, I had a record shop if i was on radio so i went on horizon uh pirate radio station that's a yeah. story in itself then obviously chris parry thinks do you know what we need a pirate radio station let's do cure fm so it's q102 and then and then that's it. And that's how that's how XFM was born. I just some of the stuff we, we could sit here all day, but people need to go and watch it. But you know, setting up a radio station at Reading and, and getting Nirvana and then I think one of them it, it was radio radio one, radio two, some equipment came down. So Sammy says, uh, yeah, I'll lend you some equipment, but you'll have to interview me. I mean, just the guy guy just knew what he was doing, didn't he? he knew where he was going. Oh no, absolutely. But I, I think the other thing that gets missed a lot I, I, obviously you're not you're going in depth with it which is fantastic okay. uh, but another thing it's like keith cameron you know he was mates with kurt cobain mm. you know these are you know these are stories that, that were going on at xfm and they were a part of you know they were on the cusp of literally everything yeah everything it's pretty, you know? so it's inspiring it's, cool. it's inspiring and I'm that sorry. was john peel you're talking about so john peel basically yes that's it that was it his CD are broken down, so he knocked on Sammy's door. And Sammy said, yeah, I'll lend it to you, but you have to interview me on Radio 1. Brilliant. I do that sort of stuff. Oh, I thought I'd put me a shirt and sound for you today because this is an important interview. So very nice. Look at very that. nice. I like right. it. Yeah, right. very you've, nice. You've picked, normally we do these and we interview bands and we play their music, but you've picked okay. you've picked four tracks and hopefully we'll get yep. through the four tracks. And what happens, I, I tell the bands as well, while the, while the video is playing, because we're going to cue the VT, you won't be on screen, so you're all right. So that's fine. We'll just, you don't, otherwise it's like a, an uncomfortable pause and it's sat there like oh That's right. yeah so the so you've picked you've picked four tracks and i'll bring what you've picked yep. like the clash london calling obviously perfect well i'm in london today so i thought uh yeah, it'd be appropriate i'm at the ground show doing this interview so i thought it'd be appropriate for it it's brilliant i'll tell you what we'll play this now and then for, okay. for everybody out there watch the video we'll be right back and we'll be talking more with ian jeffers about xfm okay. Okay. And if people, people, if that doesn't get your blood pumping, go somewhere else because that's what it's all about. It's one of my cla- I love that London Calling by the Clash. Greatest, awesome. The greatest band to ever walk this earth. They're awesome. Ever. Man. Yeah, I'll, I'd, I'd say they're good. I love them. I absolutely love. Them. That's one of my favourite tracks. That I, it's a, it's a classic. Mantra on and said he loves a bit of backward guitar. So uh, that's fantastic. Brilliant. Thanks for, thanks for choosing that as a track. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful. Right, where was we up to? Where's we up to? So we're well, Ian Jeffries, uh, director of Kick Out the Jams, uh, a story about XFM, and that was interesting because when I saw the title, I went, oh, "Kick Out the Jams." Oh, it's, it's a track, and that, I think that was the first track they played on the yeah, station. Of course, very first track, yeah. MC fives. It was got. I mean, chaotic, chaotic genius. The whole thing, you know. Mm. No, I don't yeah, mean the I, film. I mean the actual XFM and what they did was, was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, even um, yeah. I mean, again, Ricky said, you know, it was like the um, you know maniac taking over the asylum. Do you know what I mean? It's sort yeah. of. It was that. It it was based on that, and I think, I think the only other way this could have worked is the way it did work, where yeah. it burned and got sold and do you know what i mean moved on and you know i just don't think there could have been any other way they could have done it really I, than that I, I i think it's quite sad because i've i've been mentioning today it's the rise and fall and i don't want to spoil the film for people go and watch it but to to launch and do all that stuff and then go and and where they ended up to you know within a short space of time mm-hmm. from launching is is pretty sad because they were brilliant but anyway the, it, what he did it opened i don't know it, it opened an egg full of talent that have all gone off and done their own things and the world's a better place oh, for them yeah, you know what i mean if it wasn't for yeah. xfm and what they did it, we wouldn't have had some of the people that we've got i don't think they wouldn't have you know it elevated them it elevated them to a different place and uh yeah crazy i wish i had been around them but never mind we'll do our own thing so you but you've you've not only done i know we're talk, talking about this one and we want we urge people to go and watch it because i yeah. think it's a fantastic piece of tv but you've also you've done another other ones haven't you on on uh mods and and things like that haven't you? so is that is it all yeah, stuff yeah. about I mean, music? A few things sort of over time, you know, a few um, 
a few doc uh, a few documentaries uh you know and a, and a couple of movies as well and at the moment um I think I can say this. At the moment, we're at the Grout Show and we're filming um, the next documentary, which is on Irving Welsh. Right. Um, the writer of train spotting and crime and filth and everything else. And uh, some of the artists that we've got here today are really, really special, <laughs> like really special. Awesome. And I was thinking to myself, towards the end of this, interview i might uh get a few people to come and say hello to well you, i was going to say yeah i was going to say while you're there a bit like he did if if there's anyone to be interviewed on this awesome station yeah. which is dougie stone radio i'm more than happy to say i'll grab a couple of people off uh off set and uh, i'll get them to come and wave to the camera and Gen say genuinely man that would be absolutely lovely of you and uh, i really thank you and thanks for your time because i know you're busy because we were well, gonna... And Ray Burdis is here today. He's directing this with us, and um, he's the guy that done Love, Honor, and the Babes in Scum. He done the craze. So, so I'll get him Scum. to wait to you. I was I was, I was looking at that yesterday. Scum. It's that's that's a an absolute. I've shown it to some of my lads when they were growing up, and went, "Sit down, son. You're watching this because that is not where you want to be if you're a naughty yeah, boy." Do you know what I, mean? I watched? I said to Ray, "I watched that when I was 15 years of age." Yeah, and never seen it since and i can give you Kurt, a blow by blow account of that movie you know what i mean still yeah. by still yeah. yeah when the, I mean, that is how that embedded into me yeah who's of, the, who's the daddy yeah oh christ honestly who's it's the daddy in a hurry people go and watch it but all i warn you is if you ever see someone getting a, a gym sock and starting putting some uh, <laughs> some pool balls in it run <laughs> it's kicking off oh the, what a film what a film that is just awesome and people need to watch stuff like that it's it, it's you know it's powerful powerful stuff powerful definitely wonderful wonderful so it sounds like you've got a bit you've got a busy time and i mean yeah. i mean how did you pull to, for me obviously you you watch that and you, oh, it's, a, it's an hour long and everything oh, that, but that there's a lot of work involved in it i know how much you take pull something together so you got to get how do you get the people like ricky gervais to get all those people that are, that are all busy now yeah how do you well, get them to film we're very lucky right because um jim benner who was one of the djs on xfm uh when he came on board on the project i said if we can get the djs then we've got a documentary we can do it do you know mm. what i mean we've got something to do if we get uh you know if we get the djs um and then ricky will literally come back and said okay i'll do it you know i'm gonna start filming after life three on this date can we do it before then which we did we put him in there and i'd just like to say while we're here out of everyone i'm not putting anyone down but out of everyone ricky was the one that he didn't want a car he didn't want coffee he walked to where we were um he came in i went into the dressing room and said can we you know we've got a photographer yeah that's absolutely fine do that and then at the end of the interview i'm not making this up ricky said um now if there's anything else you want me to do let's do it now because tomorrow i start after life free and i won't be able to come back i don't mind staying three hours if you want me to and, and that's nice to hear because I look, you, you know, you all say don't meet your stars mm. because you're disappointing. But I always look at Ricky because I see he does used to do lots of things lives on Twitter, and I think he's he's a genuine guy who cares about things. Yeah, he's yeah. made made money, but I think at the root of it, he's still a genuine down to earth guy who's come from like nowhere to something. I think he still, I think he still remembers that, and that, I think that's quite crucial. A message for anyone: don't become a diva just because you become rich and famous. Okay. Be true to where you come from because it's really important. And I, and I, hats off to him for doing that. I think he's, I think he's funny. I think he's talented, and I, and I'd like to say, Afterlife, Afterlife is just, it's got to be up there in one of the all-time best things that anyone's ever produced. It is, it's amazing. <laughs> Be laughing and then crying within split seconds of each other. How can that? How... <laughs> no, 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 no. The funniest bit when he walks past the ladder, he calls him a pedo. Oh. He has a go. I mean, it's classic, isn't it? Even if it was a pedo, yeah. I won't go near you. Yeah, it's like it's just. Where does he? Where does he get it from? But you're right. One minute you're laughing your head off, the next thing you're like a, an emotional wreck. And... Absolutely. And I think that has also supported a lot of people in, I know we're talking about your stuff, but this is about everything, about filming, about talent. I, I think it's helped a lot of people through their grief. And if you've not watched Afterlife, go and watch that. It's awesome. I'll plug it for you, Ricky. Give us the tenor later. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, it's, it, it's, 
I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, really. It's just you've people have got to watch it. It's phenomenal. They've done all sorts of things. I mean, the the who was it on there? These nineteen ninety five. Uh, that yeah, that was what we talked about before. Noel did did some sessions before what the story mm. month. But that's quite funny because he was at Nebworth, didn't he? And he he said, I want I want I want to speak to Noel, and he was then he ended up in the, the trailer. It's just it's trailer. Yeah, waiting for him. Yeah. Yeah. Where and then you know Gary Crowley was one of the. Um, compares that day as well you know so he he compared <laughs> so which was really funny and i don't know whether it's i don't know whether because i can't sometimes you think you look at these and you think oh but there's a really funny bit where uh, where noel was slagging him off on one of the interviews yeah and said joe wiley wasn't great but like he was better or something you know so which was uh yeah, yeah i think fun. i think there's... if i remember the film he said you were crap but you were better than, you were better than Joe Wiley. <laughs> Backhanded compliment that is if I've ever heard one. If I've ever heard one. I mean so much. We've got so many extras. We've got so much stuff that we couldn't put in there. Can you imagine? Wow. You know, each probably done an hour and a half interview. So, you know, it's there's a lot. You know, like Steve Merchant's interview. We went to, you know, he again, he was a lovely man. He invited us to his house in Camden, which was beautiful. Um, and then you know, and he just welcomed us in. You've got to remember, this was through COVID as well. So we're all wearing mm. masks and, yeah. you know, and all that uh, get up. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we set it up in the in his house. And then he came in and said, oh, could we set it up in front of the BAFTAs so Ricky can see them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has them behind him. Because <laughs> Ricky don't like all that sort of stuff, does he? So uh, no. should, I'll no. tell you what we should do. Should we break you up and have a little bit? You've, you've picked another track, The K's I, Glass Town. It, What's the rationale it, behind that? Right, so um, The K's are a band. I, I, do you know what? I've done a film. Uh, I helped on a film that Ray Verdes did called To Be Someone, and they needed a band. Um, and it was sort of fate, really. I was sitting there watching Soccer AM, and The K's played this track on Soccer AM. Blew my mind. Um I then got hold of their manager, Nikki, really lovely lady, and asked them to get in the movie, and they did. I followed them since then. Uh, I went down to Victorious um, in the summer to watch them. They smashed it on mm. that main stage. They're getting bigger by the moment, and anyone out there that wants a new band, go and watch the Ks. Well, on, on, on that note then, people, as they say, well, cue to VT. We'll be straight back after this. Awesome track, this. Turn it right on. Oh. And if you don't like that, people, go and tune into Smooth FM because that's how we do it. And if you like that sort of stuff, Dougie's Atomic Dust being Thursdays, 8 a.m. It's back to back stuff like that. And that was awesome. So back in the room with Ian Jeffries. That's brilliant, how mate. Cool is that back? How cool are they? Mate, they're oh, great. Oh, and and do, you know, do you know what I like about that? And we did, we changed some of the shows. I just plugged it then because I used to do an 80s and 90s show and I got absolutely bored to death of it. And I thought, well, there's got to be some bands out there. Like back in the day, the Hacienda, let's create a show that's like that. So that's what we do on a Thursday morning, and we placed bands like that. And that for me you heard just. Pastel, yes. You I heard, heard Pastel? Yes. Pastel, have you yeah, heard we them? played them. We played them on our shows. Yeah, definitely played Pastel. Garden Party, you heard them? Yeah, we played them. The Chase? Yeah, we played them. And I'm not just saying that. You can go back and look at our last. No, 30, right. You can go I back. You. you can look at our last thirty shows that are on Spotify, <laughs> and we'll tell you what we've discovered. <laughs> so we've had uh, world exclusives, and we had everything going. On. It's wonderful. Um, oh, this is because normally we ask artists a few things, so we're going to ask. We can ask you the same. We can ask you the same thing. So <laughs> disasters. You know, like we've had things where artists turn up and like they, they're supposed to be at an open mic night, and there's nothing there but a mic, like nothing. You know what I mean? Not even a mic stand. What's what's a memorable disaster that's happened on set that you can talk about? Um, I think uh, we're in class. We're in Glasgow. I'm laughing because uh, it's horrifying even thinking about it. So we're in Glasgow, <laughs> and uh, one of the producers, bless his heart, Jason on Irving, um, was doing the interviews, which he's never really done before. He's a bit nervous, mm -hmm. um, and he introduced. A guy and said, "Oh, welcome to blah blah blah. Thanks for coming in and doing this." And the guy sat there very quietly, and I sat there thought, "He's got the name wrong. He's got his name wrong." And what he did was he took his first name and someone else that was on set second name and called him that. But the guy, I won't tell you who it was because it's unfair. But the guy called him out on it on camera. <laughs> Funny, I did that. Start, start, <laughs> he was all like, I'm so sorry. I don't, 
I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, and, and that just completely scuppers your whole, your whole, your whole it does, if, yeah. if you was nervous. But then what happens is he, he sort of shit himself for the rest of the interview. Do you know what I mean? You could hear it. He was really nervous. He was yeah. over his words and... Funny. Yeah, unless so he's all... see the thing is I'm a bit thick skinned. I, 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 stuff happens because I meant I I called you the wrong name at the start of the show, and then I was like, I just moved on from it. Just move on from it. And uh... I didn't call you out on it. You noticed I didn't call you out. On it, but... <laughs> I called myself out, but yeah, I know it's, you think it's, it's things like that. So, <laughs> what what's the plan? What's the plan? I asked the bands this, so that's what she's saying. So, what's the plans for you? So, you've created a uh, what's the next? What's next then? What 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 would you like to do? Who would you like to work with? Um, to be honest with you, all the dreams that I've got are coming, really, uh, one after the other. Like, we're doing Irving now. Um, you know, we interviewed uh, Mammy in uh, Manchester, which was just, yeah. you know, mental. Uh, Rowetta as well. Um, and then after this, we're doing, I can't really tell you the next one, but it's, it's so huge. It really is huge, the next one. And uh, the artists that are going to be on there, I'll come back, I promise. After Irving, after we do Irving, I'll come back, we'll do another interview. And um, at that time, I promise we'll be, be we'll be beginning that and I'll tell you all about it then. Fantas right? Yeah, and obviously we don't want any of you to tell us anything you can't tell us, but I was going to say, if you can come back again, because we do that with other people. We, it's not just a one hit, this. It's a we think. No, I love this format as well. I love the format that you do it on. It's just wicked, I love it. Yeah, it's, mate, we, 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 it's been built up over a few years. We've been doing it a while and it just sort of clicked in early on in the year. We said, let's change things. Let's do something different. Let's, let's bring TV and radio together. Well, let's find, because we're on a platform called Mixcloud Live, so people can communicate and they, they, they'll be probably putting message on them and totally ignoring them today. Uh, but normally <laughs> they ask bands thing, like we've got Manta Ray on a really awesome band. Um, Stuart Lee uh, isn't a fan. What's that? Uh, anyway, there's all sorts. So it's bringing all the things that people like. So they like to communicate, like to be part of the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, all, not, all, yeah. all on one platform, and then this will spin off, and we'll put this on YouTube and things yeah. like that, and we'll take the music off. Yeah, do that, and then I can share it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Will that be, we'd, we'd appreciate that. So yeah, it's it's great, and uh, we want a platform for people that are out there. There's people that are merging, you know, the that that we want uh, we want to get them out. We want to get into a wider audience. We want people to listen to these awesome bands and not just gravitate to what Absolutely. what is there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The same. The thing is, Kurt, with XFM, um, all barring about four songs. There were new bands yeah. on XFM. Do you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah, of them. Yeah. Barring four songs. And the reason why we did that, um, Sally Newman, who is fantastic on Songbird PR, she sort of helped me with the musical direction on it. Um, but they're all new bands because we want to get these new bands out there because there isn't a platform. And XFM is today. That still happens today. These bands are not getting played. Yeah. Yeah. on daytime radio they're not um and bless john kennedy's heart he plays them a lot yeah uh, on radio six as he uh decided to tell me at the premiere when i said that they weren't getting played on radio and he lent in and said, i play them i play on radio i was all right fair enough you do so um but yeah that's what that's why that's why i did that exactly what you're doing that's why i did it because of that you know yeah because it's it, yes I, I don't know, name a band, you know, Nirvana. They don't, they don't, I don't, if I'm doing an indie show, I don't need to play the people because they've, they're already, they've already made it. They, they, they're not going to get it. So what, we're, what we're trying to do and is, is build a movement where the artists and us, we're all together and listens and it just comes up and builds up and you know what, we'll have fun doing it. We'll, we'll see where it takes us. So that's fantastic. Okay. And it's the same sort of, and that's why I like the film because it's the same sort of ethos that we're after doing. I mean, I, I mean, the, they did phenomenal to do what they do, but then they ended up ended up selling to capital, didn't they, in the end, which is uh, which is a shame. Yeah. Bricks it through, was a shame. Bricks through the window with an X on it and things like that, because <laughs> of the listeners. And yeah. I think it just... I, I think the, the whole thing just really hit, like you said, they weren't playing... They wasn't playing that stuff during the day, weren't they? They weren't playing no. on the station. And I think people right driving around London were like, wow, have you heard this? It's just amazing. And I think it just exploded from there, and it's... Uh, yeah, it's it, yeah. It, it's a point in time that won't be repeated because the 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 what they did was in its time. So the radio, the pirate radio. Now now yeah. we can do all, we can do all this, and we don't you know we yeah. can do what we do. Um, but so that what they did will never be repeated in that same way. It's a one off. It's that's no. it. You can't do that ever again. And it's no, good. absolutely not. And it's good to capture it for prosperity as well. So yeah, yeah so I'm going for kids. You know. Right? And it's there forever now, isn't it? So that's that, you know? 
Yeah, and then people can look at it and go, oh, wow, I didn't really like Because I, I, I think I always thought Ricky came from the BBC. For some reason, I don't know why, but I always thought he came from the BBC, and that's where he, that's that's where he ended up meeting, you know, I thought it was the other way around. You know what I mean? So that sort of uh, explains something for, for me. So we, but we, uh, you've just touched onto something there that I was going to say as well. That's how that's how much they believed in people like, you know, Sammy Jacobs, where Claire Sturges had a career at the BBC, right? And she left the BBC yeah. to go and do this pirate radio station. That's how much they believed in them, you know? Yeah, because it's cause it, just amazing. Because the other thing is, not tracks like the BBC or for any, you know, any establishment, but there is, there's, there's you, you've sort of shackled, aren't you? Because you'll you'll be yeah, told yeah, yeah. you'll be told what you can play, when you can play, what you can say, yeah. what you can't say. You can't swear. Uh, course, our yeah. pluggers have given us all these tracks, so you've got to play these. And you might think, why am yeah. I playing this? You know, I think yeah. you know when he's one of them was playing Scritty Politic, yeah. he kicked the door and said, "Turn this shit off." I mean, I, I mean that's pretty bloody brilliant, and it? it's a bit like me. <laughs> bit like, I do that with one one of my presenters. I'm sort of getting him there now, but there you yeah, go. what are you playing this crap for? Uh, <laughs> so, all right, let's because uh, I'm quite conscious you've got stuff to do. I know I'm not okay, trying to get no I'm just looking at the time. We're all right. We're, we're still on it. We're still so on do it. You, so, the next track, do you like Hat Burns? Do you know her? Do you like her? Yeah, I was listening to this. I mean, I've got a video, but it's only the lyrics of the video. That's and right. I think it's it, it's totally different to the last two tracks you've played, isn't yeah. it? It's got a different vibe. Yeah, it's, to it. yeah, yeah definitely. So, what, the reason why I like her is that I'm very lucky, right? I've got on set. Uh, I'll introduce you to Elle, sit next to me in a minute, does makeup. Yep. And then I've got uh, Meg, who does line producing for us. And they're younger, right? So they bring these songs on to the set and they bring them, you know, when you're travelling. And this is one that's attached to me, that has been played to me recently a lot. And then suddenly I find myself singing it and I think, oh, I quite like that. Yeah. And it... then I said to my son about it and he reckons I'm down with the kids, which is, you know, I'm all right with that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I went. I do a job as well. I went into the site. It's a, it's a tech company. And I had my uh, hoodie on and my baseball cap on and my boots. And he went, oh. you're looking very millennial. millennial. There you go, millennial, mate. Kirk. I went, I was millennial before there was millennials. <laughs> there you are. Right. Let's play this because Ian's down with the kids. So we've got to play this. <laughs> Cue the VT. Okay, Cue the VT. Confrontation. People, please, though. Go well, with, people, we're with Ian Jeffries. People. I'll bring him back on screen. I did mute him because uh, just so we didn't interrupt there. But there, yeah, we we're talking about the story about XFM. I was okay. going to say to you, was Kirk. Yep. Can you hear me? I can Let hear me enough. introduce you to everyone quickly. Is that all right? Yeah. I... Okay. So here I've got Elle. Look. She's Hi. hair and makeup. Look. Hello. I've got the lime producer here. Hello. And Meg, see? Hello. Okay, let me take you into the room so you can see everyone else. Okay. So, guys, live on radio at the moment. I'm just introducing you to the guy. This is Anthony. Hey. He's Hello. doing all the camera work today. Awesome. And then over here, you've got Brian. Hi, buddy. You're Hi, mate. Hi, Brian. And then the man that you wanted to meet, we've got Ray Bird is here for you. Hello, Ex dear. Excellent, man. <laughs> How are you doing? All right, not too bad. <laughs> Are they looking after oh, you? Wonderful. They're looking get the wine in, you know. <laughs> well, oh, someone get some wine. Go and get some wine for him. <laughs> All right, how's that? Excellent, that good? brilliant, brilliant. Ooh. Okay, let me go back to my cubby hole so I can finish it off. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Good. Okay. Good. So you got a full day today, have you? Uh, we have got a full day. Yeah, we've got some great people coming in. We've got Gail Porter coming in, um, which will be fab to see her. We've uh, met her before. Um, Meg danced some parties with her at someone's wedding. And uh, and then we've got, um, who else have we got? Andrew McDonald, who was the producer off of Trainspotting, and Kirsty Allison, who was in his band. And, and she worked on Loaded. Do you remember Loaded magazine? Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> she worked there. Excellent. Train spine. Brilliant pro brilliant film. Another brilliant film that for its yeah. of its time. And oh I'd say I'd say what was an interesting link that was in there, because I ended up watching the film because of it the other day. Um okay. I can't remember who it was who had a record shop and he said this guy came in and said, What's this play? Yeah. Yeah. Bought a load Quentin of Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. And it was in the yeah, it's just absolutely so I, I, I Is I, that mental, isn't it? Yeah, and how these links and how these these links work, you know, with things that that story, yeah. it's just Crazy, craziness. Yeah. I was going to say to you, Kurt, right, on um, this one for your listeners, if you like, on uh, Train Spotting, there's a link to the Beatles in Train Spotting. Did you know this? My wife probably would, but no, but go on. 
I'm going to leave that with you. Just right. find out what that link is, right? There's a link in Train Spotting, and it, it's the link to the Beatles. All oh, right. Okay. Well, we'll have to go and watch that now. Answers Everybody on a post. For, for a reason. For Answers on a postcard, people. Oh, I see you. All <laughs> oh, right. So I get you now. I see what you've you're good at this, aren't you? You're good at this. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you've done this. Be, you've done this before. I, <laughs> I might have done. I, I, think, I think you've got a future in uh, entertainment. Excellent. So, uh, do, do you want us? To, do you want us to play this now? Let, let you get on with your day. Or you... Okay. Yeah. Cool. If that's all right. That's so, okay. Yeah. Because I know, you know you, I know you're busy, and I don't want to take. No, that's take, all right. But I, I really wanted to do the interview because I know that um, you know you guys have done sort of you know. I know uh, Sally was telling me how great the station is, and uh, and I really wanted to do it. And I'm not just saying that. I really wanted. To no. Do it. So I'm, I'm so pleased you had us on. I'm really thankful for that, mate. And we're really thankful for people like you and uh, that. You know that help people like us because we're we're on our journey. We're in a certain place on our journey, and uh, we just want to keep going. And we will never forget where we've come from. And we'll always be able to support people. Ever. I, I think I think it's fantastic. I think it's brilliant what you're doing. And um, it, I'm looking forward to speaking to you again on the and you, on the next one. And you, could you do us a favour? Could you do us a drop? We normally ask artists to do drops, and we play them on the station. So if you could just say this is Ian Jeffries, and you can mention the film if you want, and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Can you do that for us? Okay. Yeah, this is Ian Jeffries. You're listening to Dougie Stone Radio, um, one of the directors on XFM. Absolutely wonderful. So what we're going to do, we're going to play this because he's just, he's just what a tune. Come done on, this a, is a tune. seamless yeah. link. And we'll let you go. On. I mean, I'll cut, the, cut it off if you want, or you can stay and listen to the track. No, I'll just stay and listen to it. I think you've got to listen to it, yeah? You have, you have. Right, let's Definitely. have this. Now, I don't know if they're right here, but Manta Ray have been on and said, is the link Abbey Road? So I've no idea if that's the correct answer or not. Oh, that is the correct answer. There but you. why is the link Abbey Road? That we'll find out. We'll we'll find out soon. Yeah, there you go. So that's good. Cool. Cheers for having us, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank Have you. a great day. Tea. Speak to you soon. Stay safe. Thank yeah. you, fella. See you later. See you later. Cheers, Bye. man. Wonderful. Wonderful. How cool was that? Don't know how I told him to stay safe. With <laughs> but he does. Wasn't that brilliant of him to, to do that and come on and chat with us? Hopefully, we'll get him on again when he's finished his project. Really busy guy. And um, wonderful. And this is. Thanks for Wolf and Brew for sponsoring the show. This has been Dougie Stone Radio. Normally do introducing, but that was Ian Jeffries, the story about XFM. It's rise, it's fall, and everything in between. I urge you to go and watch. It's absolutely wonderful. Sounds like he's got some amazing projects in the offing, and he certainly knows his stuff. Until next time, Kirk out. <laughs>